The Old Dogs REI Network podcast is sponsored by Health IQ, an insurance company that helps health conscious people like runners, cyclists, weightlifters, and vegetarians get lower rates on their life insurance. Go to Health IQ forward slash old dog, that's Health IQ forward slash old dog, to see if you qualify. This episode of the Old Dogs REI Network is brought to you by Mino Studio. In a world where jobs are how most people make money, one man, one desire, one challenge dares to break the mold. Welcome to the Old Dogs REI Network, where we don't work for money. Money works for us. Coming soon, viewer discretion advised. Welcome to the Old Dogs REI Network, where cash flow is king. Real estate investing, the means, so you can enjoy your retirement dreams. This is the show where we cut right to the chase. No sales pitch, no long monologues, just simple how-to real estate investing advice, so you can earn the passive income you need to enjoy your retirement today. And now, your host and chief old dog, Bill Manacero. Welcome to the Old Dogs REI Network. I'm your host, Bill Manacero, and this is the show where 50 plusers and anyone else who wants to join us get solid, no sales pitch real estate investing advice to help generate real cash flow. This podcast airs twice weekly on Mondays and Fridays, and if you aren't already a subscriber, go to iTunes, type in Old Dogs, spelled D A W G, find our podcast, and subscribe. Well, we've got a, a, a great show for you today. Uh, this is going to be fun. Uh, we have a guy here, a young guy who has just been crushing it in multifamily investing and a bunch of other stuff. He's uh, just kind of like a serial entrepreneur. This is going to be fun uh, talking to our guest, who is Dave Zook. He is the founder and CEO of the Real Estate Asset Investor. He is a successful business owner and experienced real estate investor active in multifamily apartment space. And he has also a resort community development real estate holdings in several states and several countries. Uh, Dave and his investors own well in excess of $100 worth of real estate acquired since 2009 and has more than 3,000 multifamily apartments in his portfolio. Together with his business partner, Dave is also a renowned and trusted professional resource in the automatic teller machine space, ATMs, where they have deployed more than $60 million in investor capital and are heavily invested personally in this ATM space. Dave, along with his development partners, is also actively involved in the planning and development of the largest resort community called Mahogany Bay Village on the island of Abergris Key, Belize, which has been rated the number one island in the world two years in a row by TripAdvisor and is one of the fastest growing regions in the Caribbean. Mahogany Bay Village opened to the public in December 2017 as a curio collection by Hilton and is the very first branded resort on the island. As a published author and popular guest speaker, Dave has shared his knowledge at the International Business Conference, the Jason Hart Real Estate Mastermind, the Wealth Formula Podcast, and the Real Estate Guys Radio Show. Dave and his wife Susan and their four children live in beautiful Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. Well, Dave, welcome to the Old Dogs REI Network. All right, Bill. Thanks for having me on your show. Well, it is great having you on here. This is going to be fun. Uh, you've got a, a, a amazing background here for, for just a young kid, man. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm happy to be in a group where, where you guys think I'm, I'm young. My kids think I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that'll never go away, believe me. <laughs> and then your grandkids will say, man, he's 
really old. No. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. At least uh, somebody thinks you're old, man. <laughs> well, Dave, I, you know, I just wanted to kind of hear, I mean, we're obviously about real estate, but I mean, you're in a lot of different spaces. Maybe we'll touch on some of those other things. And one thing that's not even in your bio is just uh, your, you know, prefab cabin, you know, the business that you came out of. I guess it's more of a family business, right? Yeah, so we're in a modular building business. We we build uh, modular cabins. We build modular horse barns, modular garages. So a lot of things modular. Most most of what we build, no, though, is not in the modular home space. A lot of times when you say modular, people's minds uh, shift to modular homes. Um, most of what we do is uh, modular outbuildings like horse barns, uh, garages, and those sort of things. Well, that's that's really interesting. I, I actually I really latched on that and uh, went to your website and looked, uh, you know, because uh, you, you can buy, you know, raw land around. That's the only thing in Southern California that's somewhat cheap. <laughs> You know, one of the things that a lot of folks are doing are buying in the, you know, resort areas like uh, Big Bear and Lake Arrowhead, some of the nice, you know, mountain communities uh, uh, around uh, the L.A. area. They're uh, buying these little plots of land and they're putting, you know, these like uh, those, uh, these, it's not the same as what you're talking about, but these little houses you can tow in the back of your car. It's not a trailer, but it, you know, it's a like a little, little mini house. And, uh, and they actually, you know, put them on on uh, Airbnb and rent these little places out. So I was looking at your cabins and these things are beautiful. I was thinking, man, I mean, that would be great for, uh, you know, for a little Airbnb or vacation rental, um, some neat stuff there. So you've got uh, some, definitely some interesting stuff in your background here. <laughs> well, we have a, we have a pretty good reach and we've, uh, we've got trucks coming out to the West coast all the time. In fact, I think it's next week. We're bringing a whole load of uh, modular dog kennels out to your uh out to your side of the country so really three, three thousand miles away but it's uh you know people out there don't have access to to these kind of products for the most part and so we do ship all over the country well, I'm going to have to see if I can get on that uh, on that uh, rig then. <laughs> Maybe I'll see if you can slip. A, can you slip a little three bedroom cabin in there? You know, with the with we'll, the. We'll uh... figure we'll figure something out. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it sounds great. Well, Dave, yeah, why don't you just uh, give me your background here and and kind of uh, where you came from? You know, how you how'd you get in this crazy real estate world? So it was uh, really by. Um, accident it was not my intent to be a real estate investor in fact i i made a conscious decision when i was uh probably in my late teens early 20s that wasn't going to be a real estate investor and for the simple reason i saw my my dad uh, do some self-managing of the real estate he owned locally here and i just you know i thought to myself i saw some of the good bad and the ugly and i thought to myself you know there's got to be a better way to make money than than go through all that so I started out in, in my career in, in business and, and owned several businesses, started several businesses, uh, sold a business or two, um, got to the point where some of those businesses were doing really well and I got myself in, into a real tax uh, situation where I was you know, forking out several hundred thousand dollars a year. And I was always taught from the time I was a kid – uh, or or preteen that you know when you when you make a lot of money you got to pay a lot of tax, and so I you know I, I remember the day when uh, I got the call from my CPA saying you know I think it was April the thirteenth and he called me and said hey look after after you've made all your quarterly payments and we've taken whatever depreciation we could uh, you still owe you know three hundred seventy three thousand four hundred twenty two dollars and some change in two days. And Ouch. I just remember, yeah. And that was, you know, so, so all in that year, I was, I was right up about a, a half a million dollars in tax. And so I, I, you know, I was doing some real un tax unfriendly things like private money lending and doing some short term flip stuff. And, and just, you know, I, I wasn't being smart. And uh, although I was making a lot of money and I was having a lot of fun, when I had to give half of my profits back to the government, it, it kind of turned into not so much fun anymore. And it was about that time I, I was reading. I was reading a lot and I was running into – I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I read uh, – and then, of course, I read 
most of of the other books that Robert Kiyosaki wrote. And I remember hearing him talk on a webinar or a podcast or something how how you could make millions of dollars a year and not pay any tax. And that drove me crazy. I'm I'm just like, you know what? This is this is this is crazy. This is uh, you know if he can do it and if, and if he's doing it legally, you know, surely I could do it. So I figured the only way or the best way to, to, to figure out how he's doing it and what he's talking about is get to get as close to him as I possibly could. So I I uh, got in front of him on a um, at investors summit at sea put on by the, the uh, real estate guys. And uh, him and his whole team, Robert Kiyosaki and his whole team were on board. And, and you know, it was a life-changing experience. I, I figured out on that trip, I figured out that it's not an outside problem. It's not something like, oh, well, the government, you know, if they would change the tax law or if, if, if uh, the state would do something or if, you know, I, I figured out that it's up to me and that if I change my facts – this is this is a quote right straight from Tom Wilwright, whose whose uh, firm is now my CPA firm. If I change my facts, it will change my tax. And mm. so when I figured out it was it was up to me, at that point everything changed because now I could do something about it. And it was at that point that I realized that real estate, uh, specifically even multifamily real estate, if you wanted to do it on steroids, was uh, could be a real uh, tax protection vehicle. So that's what got me into the real estate space. It was I wasn't driven there, be you know, for cash flow. I had I had lots of cash flow. I was making lots of money, but I was I was chased into real estate uh, because of taxes. Wow, that's a that's an interesting story. Wow, I mean, I, I mean, I could see how that could happen too, especially if you're you're doing cash intensive things like flipping. You know, you can you're gonna get this big chunk of cash at the end of it, and then you've got to figure out how you're gonna declare that that profit. So I could see uh, how that could add up really quickly. So you uh, you know decided, okay, this is it. I'm gonna get uh, gonna get involved in real estate. Did you just? You just went out and just started buying properties, or, or how did you, how did you sort of get educated on that one? Because it didn't sound like that that was the type of business you were already involved in. No, I, I started slow. I I did educate myself somewhat. I I thought I was educated, but I I, I bought a couple uh, single family homes. I bought a couple five unit buildings. Um, it wasn't long. I wasn't doing that very long until I figured out that, you know what, this is, this is good, but it's not to the scale where I need to be, uh, to make a real dent in my tax liability. And that's when I went on a tour. I went on a three day tour down to, to, uh, the Memphis market. And I, I met up with, um, some really good folks in the Memphis market. I met up with a, a broker down there who, who ended up uh, connecting me with his uh, sort of number one customer at the time. He had just bought 800 units in the market, and he was sort of running out of cash. I was coming into the market with no units, and uh, I had some cash. So it was kind of a perfect fit. It was, uh, you know, he put us together, and we ended up doing a deal together where I was the equity partner. He was the management team. And that's where it kind of started. Actually, it started before that. I did a deal in Memphis with um, a partner who just uh, ended up not being the right fit, not being competent enough to get the deal done. Um, I lost a lot of money on that deal, and we ended up you know, selling the, the property at a big loss. But uh, my real entry into the multifamily market was then with my now team, and uh, we ended up doing a deal together, and we um, – have done a bunch of uh, business since we, uh, we liked each other. We liked how we, how the, how the deal was working out. He's a, he's got a management company and he, he doesn't do any third party managers, uh, management, but he, he manages all of our assets and, uh, it was a good fit. I mean, I, I wanted to be in a position where I didn't have to get on a plane and go down and, and take care of issues and problems. And, and, uh, that was important to me. So, being able to partner with somebody that was boots on the ground and really, really good at what they were doing was was very important. Ah, uh, that's neat. Uh, that, that broker wouldn't have to be Steve Woodyard, would it? Uh, oh yes. Oh uh, yeah. Steve, He's Steve is the guy. man. 
great guy. Yeah. Steve is uh, you you won't uh, you won't be in the market for multifamily apartments very long in the Memphis area without running into Steve. Yeah. Steve and his his him and his three man team are involved in almost half the transactions in multifamily in the, in the entire city. Yeah, he's got to be. Yeah, he's just, uh, you know, and then beyond that, not only doing the, the bulk of the business, he's just a real straight up guy too. I mean, he's, yeah. uh, I mean, he has been so honest and properties that I've been looking at out there and uh, just, you know, real upfront, you know, this has got some issues in this area. Well, you know, and brokers never do that, you know? So, I mean, he is really, he's a, he's a good guy, good guy. Steve has talked me out of buying uh, more properties than he's talked me into buying, and that's important to me. You know, I mean, yeah. when you look at when you look at how he makes his money, uh, you know, it would make sense for him to sell anything to me he can get his hands on. But he's he thinks longer term than that, so that's that's important. I think I'm going to have Steve uh, buy some ad space here on this uh, show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you should. <laughs> No, that's great. No, that that says that says volumes. I'll tell him he needs to listen to the to the, uh, to the show too. Oh, definitely, definitely. He's a good good man. Well, that's neat. So, okay, so you just you started started going in with this guy that was already heavily in that uh, market. Have you stayed in the same market, or have you kind of ventured into other areas, or are you you just exclusively at this point in Memphis? So far, it's been all Memphis except for uh, several deals that we've done in Texas. Uh, bought a couple uh, multifamily units in San Antonio uh, a number of years back, and uh, just just recently in the last uh, in the last year or two, I bought one. Uh, we we bought one down in uh, Baytown, Texas, a small eighty-eight unit deal, um, and that's been working out very well. But uh, I would say ninety percent of our portfolio in multifamily is in Memphis. Oh, that's great. Great. That's a good area. It's and it's, uh, you know, actually it's, uh, it's doing some really neat stuff right now. The numbers wise, uh, it's a, oh, yeah. it's a great place to invest. So, uh, uh, whether it's single family homes or, or multi, it's, it's, it's a really, really good market. So that's good for you. You kind of mentioned, you know, what, how you kind of shifted over there. Now, are you still, uh, you seem like kind of a restless entrepreneur here. <laughs> so you've got you got ATMs, you've got uh, you've got real estate, you know, you've got the uh, the modular home thing, um, and and you've got now now you've got this uh, property in Belize. That that sounds really really interesting. I'd like to hear more about how, how uh, that's got to be uh, got to be something that the real estate guys brought you into because I know they're really big in in Belize. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm part of the real estate guys inner circle, and I'm I'm actually um, on their advisory team. And so, yeah, you're right. They introduced me to the Memphis market. They also introduced me to the Belize market. Just a great group of guys over there. And and no, it, it, you know, you mentioned restless. I I I wouldn't say restless. I would say. When I get a chance to do business with a really good group of folks, there's just a lot of things to like about that. I mean, I just, you know, I, I when I find a, a really good team and we go get onto a, a really good asset that that you know really works for us, I just like to do business with them over and over again. Um, when I get approached by a, a team in a in another asset class. And they've got a good long track record of success. They've got, um, say, investors. Uh, you know, our our group of investors. It's kind of a small group, and you really don't have to search too hard to really figure out uh, who's who in in sort of our world. So you know, when somebody in my network comes to me uh, raving about uh, a great team in a certain asset class and they make the introduction and, and, you know, there's the opportunity to do business with them. Um, I, there's just a lot of things to like about that. So I, I'm not tied into one specific asset class. Um, I think it's more important, more important than the asset itself, I think is, is having a great team around you. That's that's so true. That's that's real, especially when you're investing out of town too. I mean, or out of state. You're just, you you know, having that team is is real critical. The people, you, the boots you have on the ground there for sure. In the beginning, it sounds like you um, you were investing primarily with your own funds. And you're up to gosh, uh, well, at least in the bio here, it says you you know you've got over three thousand units. Um, uh, have you started getting into syndication? Or are you still doing it on your own? 
No, I am syndicating. Um, I got into the syndication business again, sort of by accident. When I started buying multifamily uh, apartments, I was doing it for myself. Uh, like I told you earlier, I had a tax problem and I, I, I had a problem that needed fixed. And, and so I started doing it on my own. It wasn't until I was invited to sit on the founding board of a startup bank here locally, and I was with about a dozen other uh, entrepreneurs and business owners uh, sitting around the table at this at this startup bank, and I, I heard some side conversation that went something like this. The side conversation was such that these guys were you know, debating or wondering if if investing in this startup bank was a good idea because they they didn't have any expectations of getting any kind of a return cash return for five to seven years. But the thought process was, well, you know, it's probably better than putting our money in a CD. And at the time, a CD was playing, you know, a half a percent. <laughs> so, so, so beats a half I, a percent. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, we're, we're doing at the same time, I had bought a couple hundred units of my own uh, down in Memphis. And I was getting to the point where I was going to have to slow down. I was running out of cash. I had gotten my family involved when they see when they saw how things were going and and you know we were just getting to the point where we we're going to have to slow down and and I got to thinking I was like there's got to be a way I'm over here making you know 10 to 14% return on our on our uh, multifamily deals and these guys are basing their investment decisions on a half a percent return there's got to be a way we can bridge that gap and bring these guys on board so the very next deal that came along I needed to raise you know I needed $850,000 to get the deal done bank came in with their 75 percent we came in with you know we needed to come in with 850 and so i went out to some of these guys and you know asked them if they wanted to i showed them what we were doing in the market i showed them the numbers showed them some deals that we'd done asked them if they wanted to join uh team up with us and so we funded that deal and those guys were happy they're 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 still making a double digit return on that property years later and so they were happy they wanted to do it again they told a couple of their friends their friends got on board and they told a couple of their friends it sort of grew organically from there uh but no it, it was a, it was it was not something when i started in that in that space it was not something that was going to be a syndicator and i was i was doing it for myself interesting now now these guys were investing as individuals or was the bank actually funding the loan so the bank came in with 75% okay, of, got it. The, of the got equity, it. of the debt, and uh, then uh, the investors came in with 25% of the equity. And was that the first syndication for you at that point? It was. Ah, that's that great. Was the first, it was the first multifamily syndication that I'd, that I'd ever done. Right. Well, interesting. Wow. Um, that's that's it's, it's a kind of a different ballpark with the syndication. But, you know, again, it's all in the team, you know, getting a good SEC lawyer, getting, you know, the, the folks on board that you have to, uh, that makes it a lot easier, um, especially if it's people you can trust. So um, which is key. Yeah, and, and and once you build that team and you you tweak the team and you bring new new team members in and and kind of refine the process after you got to kind of the 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 core kind of uh, recipe and you got the right people on your team, I mean, you really just you know you you can do you know you don't have to stop at one. You can, in fact, you get better with every one that you do. Just for our listeners' sake here, what uh, who are the people that comprise your teams? Are you talking about the teams in the different asset classes? Are you talking about legal, CPA, and that kind of uh, team? Both. I think they're they're both important to know. Yeah. Okay. So my uh, SEC <laughs> it's funny. It was funny. A guy asked me the other day, "Who's your lawyer?" And I had to stop and think. Are you talking about a 1031 lawyer, or my SEC lawyer, or my tra <laughs> trademark trademark lawyer, or my patent lawyer? Or you, I mean, I got like you know ten different lawyers in my life. But no, my my uh, in my syndication business, uh, my SEC attorney is uh, Mauricio Riold. He has uh, a company, Premier Law Group. Um, my CPA I mentioned earlier is from. Provision. His name is Tim Gertz. In fact, if your listeners want to um, get their mind wrapped around tax law, different ways that um, you could uh, reduce your taxes in 2018, Tim Gertz and I did a webinar together. Uh, 
we a friend of mine, Buck Joffrey, hosted the show for us. I know but Buck Tim, real well. Yeah. Yeah. So Tim Gertz is my CPA from Provision, and we did a webinar together. I'd be happy to, to send you a copy of that. Yeah. Why don't you? We'll we'll link it in our show notes so that people can access that. That'd be great. That'd be great. So. Yeah, so those are, you know, of course, then you got closing attorneys, you got relationship with banks and, you know, depending on where you're doing the deal and, and, uh, but no, it's, it's, you know, assembling that team and, and, you know, don't get intimidated for your listeners. Uh, don't get intimidated thinking you got to set up this whole team before you go to do a deal. Um, you, you, yeah, you need a few key players, but, you can build that team as you're doing the deal. And when you're doing the next deal, you can pick up another guy. And, and, you know, the thing is when you, when you have a really good team member, let's, let's just say when you have a, a really good broker, he'll introduce you to, to a really good banker and he'll introduce you to a really good property manager. And he'll, you know, you really only need to know a, a, a really good guy or two in any specific market. And once you tap into their network, cause good guys run with good people. So right. you, you you know, don't let that intimidate you or stop you from from going out and doing a deal. You can build your team as you go. That's 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 really key, hundred uh, percent. Like uh, the broker and uh, property manager in those those out of state markets are, are key, uh, and they're usually, like you said, if they're good good folks, they've got good people, contractors, and all the other folks that you need in hand. And then as far as the other team members, uh, one of my rules is. I don't need to know everything there is to know about the ATM space to go out and raise $20 million. I, you know, in the last 14 months, I raised over $20 million in the ATM space. I'm not the ATM expert. Mm-hmm. My, one of my rules is to go find somebody who has the 10,000 hours, who, who put in the 10,000 hours. They're, they're the expert in that space. So if I team up with the experts in that space, I only you and I only got – so many 10,000 hours in our lifetime. So we can't be, I can't be the 10,000 hour guy in the multi, in the multifamily uh, business, the ATM business, the Belize resort business, the self storage business. I only got, I only got a, a few of those 10,000 hours in my life. So I'd rather, you know, just hook up with a team that has their one thing, our self storage guy. That's the only thing they do. They own 42 self-storage facilities themselves. And so they've got the 10,000 hours. All I got to do is tap in to their team, tap into their system, and uh, we, we got a winner. Yeah. Well, that's how partnerships are made, right? You know, you've got uh, one person with this skill, one person with that, somebody with capital, somebody with, you know, and you, you bring them all together. And uh, that's that's how deals get made, good deals. You know, That's great. Well, um, you know, it's, it's, since you've been doing this, especially in the real estate sphere too, um, it, 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 you know that that's that's quite a number of units that you have. You must have encountered some some challenges along the way. And uh, one of my questions is really, wh- what would you consider sort of your biggest mistakes uh, uh, since since you got involved in real estate? My biggest mistakes was it, it always had to do with the people. My biggest mistake was I teamed up with the wrong guy. And that was on my first trip to Memphis. I teamed up with the wrong guy. We went out and did a 72-unit deal together. Um, I was convinced. He convinced me that um, it was the best deal ever. And I went all in. I was. He was the syndicator. Or I was the syndicate. I ended up being the only syndicate in his in his uh, you know in his deal. Um, I came in with, in with seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. Walked away with two fifty when we sold it uh, four or five years later. Ouch! Oh, man. It was it was painful. But again, I mean, it was it was a valuable lesson. You know, I keep talking. I keep talking about the team here, and it wasn't because I was born with that instinct. It was because I, you know, it got pounded into me. And luckily, this happened before I was a syndicator. So it was it was my money, and and luckily it wasn't uh, you know five or ten other investors in the deal. School of hard knocks there. You know, I just I just had that conversation today. I said, man, you know, they, they, I, I met with an investor, and he asked me, you know, about my education, and I said, well, I was I was born and raised Amish. I you know I've got an eighth grade education, uh, you know, in, in real school, but I can tell you, I paid for probably several. 
uh, Harvard educations out here in the real world. I got banged around a lot, and and my education, the money that I spent on my education so far, I could have I could have probably bought a couple rounds at Harvard or one of the big Ivy leagues. Yeah, I think you know with real estate too. I mean, uh, this is what I, I you know I talk to a lot of people, I, I you know all the time, and and you know I emphasize the importance of education, importance of education. You know, you know, read what you can, do the podcast, and listen to the you know the the this you know whatever webinars or whatever but the real education really starts after the purchase of the first property i mean that that's really where the education began at least it began for me oh, after yeah. that first property i mean wow uh, and and uh, but you know that's there's, i don't i can't think of a better way to learn then uh, you know you try to re- you try to cut your casualties there as much as you can, but the bottom line is we all have to go through it. It's just uh, I, I really think that's uh, that is a, that's one of the best ways you can learn it. And, you know, and you try to offset it. You know, and cut your losses by having uh, you know good mentors and people around you, like you said, that are have their ten thousand hours. But the bottom line is uh, you're still going to make the mistakes and, and learn from them. Now, with with this deal, the seventies uh, was a seventy two unit. Was it uh, is is a partner issue, or was it like you bought it in the wrong market, and uh, there were other issues, uh, or the or maybe the problems with the property? Well, that, that's why a team is so important, and that's why my my focus is is usually so much on the team. Yeah, it was in the wrong area of the city. Well, why did we buy there? Well, because of the lack of the quality of the team. So if I'd had a really good team member, if I'd had Steve Woodard on my team at that point. He would have, you know, probably steered me away from that purchase. So, yeah, it was, you know, a lack of competence on the on on my team member. Uh, it was in a in a wrong location. But a lot of the reasons that that property didn't perform, um, you know, whether it be wrong location, whether it be you know just not being able to get the job done and just not being competent, at it, you know, it all comes back to the team. Great point. Uh, well, conversely, what would you say your biggest uh, success uh, has been in the real estate sphere? A biggest success, I would probably not point to a certain asset. Although there's, although there's some that you know that I'm thinking of that come, you know, that that immediately pop up in the uh, front of mind. But I, I'd say the biggest success in my uh, career as a real estate investor has been to uh, be able to connect with the teams or with the right people and be able to get in to a position where I could do a deal with them. Um, that's, that's been the biggest part of my success. I mean, yeah, once you get that in place and you do start doing business with really good teams, yeah, then you can point to different assets. Uh, but again, the asset to me is secondary to a great team. So I would say this my biggest success in 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 real estate or in any asset class was to be able to locate a team with the 10,000 hours. I I love teaming up with people that have their one thing. Mm-hmm. You know. Right. I I've got I've got a bunch of things going on, but I love teaming up with people that have their one big thing. Our our my multifamily guy, that's all he does. My self storage guy, all he does, I mean, it, you know, it, it it it's a beautiful thing when when you can ask any question to your team on the ground, and they're like, well, yeah, that makes a lot of sense, or well, no, that doesn't make any sense at all because, and they'll list the reason why. So tapping into the right team uh, with that, you know, with the right track records, with the uh, integrity, honesty. Uh, being able to work with teams like that has, has just been brought me a lot of success. That's neat. That's what it sounds. It sounds like it. Your, your ability to to put together the right people, that's key. I mean, that, I would say in real estate, there there is nothing more more important. Some people say it's location, location, location. Uh, I would say it's relationships, relationships, relationships. It's 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 really the people that uh, you interface with, and uh, I think that sounds like you're you're definitely skilled in that area, putting together the right people. That's great. Our audience is, as you know, you know, these are folks that are 50 plus and in age, um, and they're either approaching retirement and they're, you know, they're kind of concerned 
that they might not have what they thought they wanted to have for sort of the retirement of their dreams, uh, or, or they're maybe uh, in a situation where maybe they have the funds, but now they're concerned about maintaining it and keeping it and, and investing right and doing things. Uh, and then there are those that, you know, that maybe uh, it's, you know, they're, they're already retired and they're realizing, gee, you know, I'm not cutting it and uh, I need to, to boost my cash flow here. So you've got all these different people that are looking at real estate as a means to be able to help them in that in their retirement years. What kind of advice would you give? Maybe, you know, like you're talking to your own parents or something that might be thinking of, you know, one way to, to do this. Um, how, how would you advise the, the folks in that category? How, how should they get started? Well, one thing that, that, I, wanted, that I want to mention early on uh, is, you know, we all, we all wish we would have started earlier. So let's not, let's not even think about that. You know, I, I, I wish I'd have started earlier. My, my younger brother, um, you know, I got them kind of, uh, they kind of caught the bug in their early twenties and they wish they would have started earlier. <laughs> so let's, let's, let's cross that one off okay. because, they're, you know, it's one of the things where you can't, you can't go back. So I would say for one, uh, start with your education and getting around the right people. Uh, join the real estate club in your town. Just you know, get around people that are doing what you want to do, and and then specifically, listen to people who've done it. I don't care what you know. If you're in the front of the room, I don't care. You know, and, and you're teaching on a topic. I don't care what you know. I want to see what you've done. Mm -hmm. And so, listen to the people who are out there doing it. And, you know, if you can tap into some of those brains, pull them aside, take them for lunch, you know, find a way to add value to them, tap into those guys and get around the people, get around the right people, educate yourself. If you need to start small, start small, you know, take that first step. It doesn't have to be a big deal on your first deal, but action, um, you know, action is important. You know, you can you can go to all the clubs you want. You can read all the books you want. At some point, you got to step out and take action. Life rewards action. Right. Great advice. Great advice. Well, you've you've got uh, man, you've got a lot of stuff going on. It, it just seems really uh, really great. I mean, you're you're in in you know different different types of assets, different types of businesses. Um, what, what's sort of your your long term? You're a young guy. You can still you got a, a lot ahead of you in terms of wh where do you want to see things go uh, in maybe the next 10, 20 years down the road? I plan to be doing this till the day I die. I, you know, maybe not in the multifamily space. Maybe it'll be in some other space. I mean, I don't want to, we don't want to do deals just to do deals. If they don't make any sense anymore, we're not going to do deals. Um, you know, my partner and I in Memphis, we had this conversation that, hey, we might only have a three or four year window to get this done. Uh, we're kind of entering that three and four year space. Actually, we did. We, we entered that three and four year space. We're still getting deals done here and there. They slowed down a lot, though. And you got to, you know, one of the things one of the things we realized that if we're in the right if we're in the right place at the right time with cash, you can still get some deals done. But, you know, some of these deals got hair on them and you got to be able to, you know, you got to have a great team to, to get it done. So, you know, we might not be in the multifamily space two, three years from now. Yeah, yeah, we'll still have our portfolio, but we might not be aggressive buyers in the space. So I would say just continuing to build those relationships, be continue to uh, add value to my investors. Um, I, I love I love this business. We. Uh, I, I've created. I've been able to create a lot of relationships in this business that, had I just stayed in the modular building business, I'd never know these folks. And 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 we uh, we have a blast together. Um, I have a. I throw a, a summer backyard bar barbecue for all of my investors uh, on a Friday night here here at the house. And and to get a group of guys together that are accomplished that. Um, are business owners, entrepreneurs, just really smart folks. Uh, you get a group of guys like that together, great things happen. 
we're going to Belize in two weeks where I invited a bunch of my investors come down and and we're going to have Tim Gertz from ProVision, my CPA. We're going to have him down there. We're, we don't have any formal classrooms or any um, you know slideshow presentations or any of that stuff, or PowerPoint presentation. We have, but we are going to spend a lot of time at the pool. And we are going to spend a lot of time on a beach, and we'll be we'll be we'll be hashing out ideas and strategies and figuring out how to best put ourselves in the position to win. So that that's kind of fun stuff you can do with uh, relationships when you when you build this kind of a network. And I expect I I just plan to expand that over the next ten years. That's really neat. And you're staying, of course, at the Mahogany Bay Village, right? <laughs> we are. Oh, that's great. That's great. <laughs> Man, it sounds like a beautiful place. I mean, that's got to be got to be amazing. Just uh, really amazing. That's neat. Neat. Well. Uh, Gosh, we're we're kind of running out of the out of time here. This has gone real real fast. Gosh, great great information. Uh, I can't thank you enough, Dave, for sharing. Hey, fellow old dogs! Before we jump into our wrap it up session, I just wanted to let you know that an important part of being a successful real estate investor is knowing how to regularly reduce your expenses. It's a big part of what I do every day to maintain a healthy real estate portfolio. Well, I tried to do the same thing with my personal finances as well. And when I heard about a life insurance company that gives exclusive rates to those of us old dogs who try to eat right, exercise, and stay healthy, I got very stoked. Like saving money on your car insurance for being a good driver, Health IQ saves you money on your life insurance for living a health-conscious lifestyle. For those of us who are trying to be healthy and keep our expenses down at the same time, it just makes sense. Learn more and get a free quote at healthiq.com forward slash old dog. That's healthiq.com forward slash old dog. Wrap up things we call it our wrap it up. Basically, I ask you a series of quick questions about different resources, and uh, these can be resources that uh, our listeners hopefully can tap into at some point uh, uh, that uh, have been valuable for you. And uh, and it's kind of a quick, you know, like lightning round type deal. So if you're ready, I'll go ahead and do our wrap it up uh, session. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, let's do it. Favorite real estate book the one that made the most impact i would have to say rich dad poor dad yeah same here on that one uh, how about favorite business book this one's kind of uh it has a lot to do with business so i'm gonna give it a shot go giver yes yes that's you know I, i've been hearing more and more about that i haven't read it yet but uh i gotta read this now i keep hearing it over and over it sounds like a great book I, I try to read it at least once a year. Oh, that's neat. You know, there's like the second person that told me the exact same thing. So it's got to have some good value there if you're reading it on a regular basis like that. That's great. Uh, how about your most valuable website for success uh, other than your own? I would say, I don't know that it's a website, but it's a daily. Uh, Darren Hardy puts out a really good morning uh, video. It's about two anywhere from two to five minutes long and it's just a really good way to kick off your day he, he has some really good stuff in there so website sort of not really but i'll go with that one darren the, hardy the darren Dar darren hardy's darren daily is what darren he calls daily. it okay we'll, we'll get that uh we'll get we'll track it down here and uh we'll put that link on our website too uh great how about uh favorite app I would say the one I use the most is my financial calculator. Oh, really? Okay, that's great. Um, just off your phone then, right? Yeah, oh, that's great. Uh, how about a favorite quote? It's mine. You want to hear it? <laughs> is that the quote? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's mine. All right, so this, so this is one that I, that I came up on my own. I got a trademark. No way. So, we got uh, to give you – okay, we're going to definitely give you credit for this one uh, with a little you know, right. TM on it or something. You know, let them know. Oh, right. yeah. Oh, yeah. It, has a t it does have a TM behind it. You can, you can be conventional or you can be wealthy. Pick one. Ooh. Very good. Very good. Wow. That's great. It's going to be made famous here. Okay. We're going to have that one. <laughs> I love it. It's probably already famous, right? <laughs> oh, it's been picked up by quite a few financial radio shows. I love it. I love it. Okay. And here's, this is our big, uh, our apocalyptic question here is 
Um, if something catastrophic happened and you lost every asset you you own, okay, and all you have really of any value is a thousand dollars in cash, what would you do with that one thousand dollars to try to rebuild? Not, not, you know, maybe first your real estate business uh, or other businesses to kind of get back to where you are today. Well, if this was two years ago, I'd buy Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Well, <laughs> if we all knew no, about I that would, one. <laughs> no, I would say I would say I would spend at least half of that money on my own education. That's a good point. I would I would pay for a course. I would uh, yeah I would spend I would spend at least half of that on my own education. Great, great. Well, good. Well, you know I've got. A lot of folks listening here, and uh, many of which are, are probably very interested in any one of your businesses. <laughs> so, <laughs> how do people get a hold of you and find out more, or you know, maybe do business with you? What's the best way for folks to get a hold of you? Well, first of all, you can you can go to our website at therealassetinvestor.com, or you can send me an email at Dave Zook at therealassetinvestor.com. Well, Dave, this has been awesome. We have really, really loved having you on, but it's not over, okay? Uh, but wait, um, we've still got our closing howl. So, uh, Dave, uh, you know, I know you're in Pennsylvania. I know some people have some pretty awesome dogs out there, been through the Amish country out there. I love it. I've seen some great dogs. So uh, you're going to have to give us one that's really going to just, uh, you know, shake up all of Pennsylvania here. Are you ready? I'm ready. I haven't done a lot of howling lately, but I'll give it my best shot. <laughs> okay. Give it your best. You got it. All right. Oh, that was, oh, that? That was good. That, you know, kind of <laughs> as it faded away, it sounded even more dog-like than human-like. Okay. <laughs> oh, that was really good. That's a, that's a, you may, you know, you, you don't know. We have once a year, we have our golden howl awards. We listen to, oh, nice. we listen to all of our guests and, uh, you know, you could, very easily get in that contest, at least get into the final round. So uh, that was a go. good one. <laughs> well, uh, well, thanks, Dave, uh, for being on. Uh, really, really loved having you on, and we'll uh, we'll definitely stay uh, on your website and uh, follow you. See what you see what you're up to. It sounds like you're doing some neat things. Thanks, Bill. It was fun. Thanks for having me on your show. Uh, it's been great. And I also just want to thank all of our old dog listeners out there, too, for joining us. I know there's a lot of other things you could be doing right now, but the fact that you've taken the time to join us means a lot, and we really appreciate it. Uh, please note, old dog listeners out there, everything presented here, okay, including the links uh, to all these different things that uh, Dave mentioned, can be accessed in our detailed show notes on the Old Dogs website at olddogsreinetwork.com forward slash blog. And that's where you'll find all of our show notes there. So just look for the show with Dave Zook. That is it for today. Uh, remember, cash flow is king and real estate investing the means. Until next time. Keep moving forward, and may God bless. Thank you very much for visiting the Old Dogs REI Network. We would greatly appreciate if you would stop by iTunes and let us know what you think of the show. We would love if you could subscribe to the podcast, give us a five-star rating, and write a review. The more ratings and reviews we receive, the more visible the podcast will be to others. Thank you.